How is it going, everybody? I'm Sam Lee, reading for writer Jaden Spizek, and welcome to Gaming Instinct's How to Slay series for Monster Hunter Rise. In today's episode, we teach you on how to fight the Puke Puke. The adorable poison dealer of Monster Hunter World, Puke Puke, is back for Monster Hunter Rise, making its first appearance during the four-star quest, A Poisonous Project. Here's what to expect when dealing with this monster. Puke Puke is a bird wyvern who is as colorful as he is dangerous. This flying beast spends most of his time shooting poison at hunters from both his mouth and tail. Puke Puke also utilizes his tongue as a whip and incorporates kicks into his attack patterns. Hunters should prepare by making sure they have antidotes and herbal medicine to cure themselves. For the battles ahead, let's go over the monster's weaknesses. Hunters should aim for both Puki's head and tail to deal the most damage possible. Puki Puki is most weak to electricity, with ice and fire being decent alternatives. Hunters wanting to inflict ailments should be aware that paralysis and sleep are highly effective on Puki Puki. Hunters can also inflict blast and thunder blight to deal some extra damage. Now, let's go over the monster's attack patterns. The first attack we're going to discuss is the poison shot. Puki Puki has two variations of this move, the first being a single shot attack, while the second involves three projectiles. Whichever variant is used, dodging the poison is quite simple. Hunters should sidestep out of the way when Puki fires a single poison shot whereas evading the triple shot requires hunters to dash forward or roll off to the side. That having been said, those using an insect glaive or attacking from the air should exercise caution. Puki Puki can fire his poison in the air at hunters, which both inflict poison and halts any attacks in the process. The next attack is the tail spray. Puki Puki's tail is able to store poisonous gas and spray it out, affecting a large area behind himself. Hunters should be cautious and move to Puki's side when they see his tail puff up in the middle. Their focus should be on cutting off Puki's tail, in order to lessen the effects of the poison. Without his tail, Puki Puki's poison cloud only covers a short distance and doesn't linger as long. And the last attack on our list is the Tongue Whip. Puki Puki has a long tongue that can whip out and attack in a fashion similar to Kezu's next strike. Puki is more likely to use this attack if fighting a ranged hunter, as hitting the hunter allows Puki to stagger them and fly in for a combo attack. When Puki raises his head, hunters need to roll to either side in order to void his tongue. Finally, let's go over playstyle strategy with range versus melee. Range hunters using a bow and the various bow guns should use slicing ammo, if available, to sever Puki's tail when they need to. Bow users in particular should focus on Puki's head and avoid the poison shots at all cost, while using dash juice to maintain stamina and stay on the move. Melee hunters should also prioritize severing Puki Puki's tail, as this will make him safer to approach from behind. Once the tail is gone, these hunters should aim for Puki's wings and head to stun and stagger him for massive damage. We advise that melee hunters wait to aim for Puki's head until it's between attacks, since this window of time allows for substantial damage to be dealt. And that's all for this installment of Gaming Instinct's How to Slay for Monster Hunter Rise. To see more guides and how-tos, make sure to subscribe. Until next time, happy hunting.